I tested the world champion AI tool for academia and research, and this is what I found. So if you head over to Chatbot Arena, large language model leaderboard, you can see that at the top is Gemini X1206. Hmm, that's above ChatGPT. Why haven't I tested it before? I want to see what this chatbot or large language model can do for academia and research. So once you click on here, you get taken to this. And this is the Google AI Studio. And really, this is about sort of testing different prompts. But you do get access down here to all of Gemini's features. And this is the one I'm interested in here because a Apparently, it's top of the leaderboard at the moment. Congratulations, Google. And we've got here Gemini Experimental 1206. And you can see we've got other ones as well. But this is the one I'm interested in, so I'll click here. So there's a range of things that you can do with AI in academia. Obviously, you can use it for writing. You can use it for data analysis. You can use it for all sorts of things. But I want to know, is it good for a general use large language model? Because up until this point, I have heavily recommended ChatGPT, which you can see here is in a close second position. And you've got these ones which are a third and fourth. Uh, joint fifth. Anyway, there's all other ones up there. So ChatGPT overall is winning, but can this do any better? So the first thing I wanted to do is see if it had any idea about the current state of literature. Now, here's the thing. I'm not expecting this to have internet access, but maybe in its training model, it's got some ability to sort of withdraw information from its base model. But let's have a little look. I've got here Find me peer-reviewed papers about OPV devices from 2023. I gave it like a year to see if it was up to date, and it gave me quite um, an interesting response because down here we've got quite a detailed response which goes from high performance OPV materials to stability and lifetime to emerging OPV applications to um, other tips for finding other things like specific keywords. So in terms of its response, I really can't fault it. It's taken that one sentence. It's really, really gone deep. Oh, deep. That's apparently what deep means. Um, and here we go. This is, um, you know, now the next step where we need to see if these are actually real things. It doesn't link out to the papers, but I took this first one up here and I went to Google Scholar and I put it in and uh, you can see it kind of got it right in a way. It's not from 2023, even though I think it told me it was from 2023. And it said it was from Nature Energy and it is from Nature Energy, but it got like the title just like a little bit wrong. So non-fullerene acceptors with branch side chains and improvement like, yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. We like that. And then here it's just sort of like bumped it up by 1% efficiency. It says here exceed 19% efficiency and here it's 18% efficiency. So it's doing that thing where it's hallucinating a little bit. It's trying its best to give me sort of like a plausible response, which remember large language models are just like these little kind of uh, plausibility machines and they're trying to just give you a good answer. They're not interested in the facts per se. So uh, I found that paper and you can see it does exist in a way, but I went through other ones and they just didn't exist at all. I found it really hard to find them. And the DOIs, this bit, which is what you normally use to sort of like identify the paper, um, they just don't work sometimes. They don't go anywhere and they're not clickable. So it is um, a try at your own risk. But I wasn't expecting it to do particularly well because it doesn't have internet access. Um, and so uh, you're better off using something like Perplexity. Um, you're better off using something like Illicit, which does actually have an up-to-date um, uh, reference list that you can ask questions about. So that was a little bit of a fail, but stay around because you're going to see its true power in a minute. All right, so I want to work with its strengths. Here, I'm saying, give me some text that I can work with. So I just put in a very simple prompt. I said here, create a literature review on transparent electrodes. And down here, you can see, okay, here's a literature review. It didn't give me the full prose, but really that's not what I'm interested in. When I first think about a literature review, I'm thinking about structure. I'm thinking about bullet points. I'm thinking about content that could be in there and interesting overall flow of the literature review. And this is what it gives me. So it says introduction, which is great. 
and then it's got solar cells, so it starts nice and high, transparent electrodes, um, light emitting diodes, touch street, you know, tells me where they're used, and then key requirements, okay, good, so it needs to have all of those. You know, remember, we're not expecting this to be referenced at all, um, and then we've got major classes of transparent electrode materials. This is interesting, and it got it right. So overall, you can see it's done a good job at creating the structure for me, but it hasn't really sort of like fleshed it out, but that's not a bad thing. I think, uh, you know, if you're using AI, the first thing I always do is ask for a structure and it's done exactly that. You can then ask follow-up questions down here just to say, you know, fill out this little bit with more information, turn these bullet points into a full paragraph, that sort of stuff. And overall, I think it's done a pretty good job. It really went deep again. So this isn't as good as something like Grok, by the way. I tried this as well. Grok, this is Twitter's um, large language model. And you can see here, it's even got references because it has got real-time internet access. I'll be doing a full video on Grok soon. But this was interesting to me that even Twitter is able to produce, you know, you can see it's still got that nice structure, but it goes a bit further by giving you actual real links to real papers. Okay, enough of that. That's not what this video is about. Let's go back. Let's go back to the other thing. All right, we know it can give us structures, but can it analyze and provide critique about scientific writing? So here I've got an abstract, and I said here, provide some feedback on this draft of an abstract for peer review, and I put it in there, just copied and paste, and it says, the abstract is a good start, but it could be improved by being more specific and highlighting the novelty and significance of the research. Okay, I like that. It's giving me like a strength uh, sandwich, or a, what is it called? A criticism sandwich, where you have something good, something good, and then in the middle, you're like, oh, this bit's the worst bit. And that's kind of what it's done. So here it's done like strengths. And I'm like, oh, thanks. Clear topic. Oh, I'm feeling good about myself. Key findings. Yeah, I've got that. Application stated. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then weaknesses. Oh, no one likes weaknesses. No one likes to be told where they're failing. But here we've got vague introduction. And once I actually got rid of that shame, oh, oh, merge from the shame, um, I feel like it actually did a really good job at critiquing this in an academic way. Um, so I think this is, is just like the perfect use case for it. If you're using it for writing, it is just so much more powerful than other tools that I've used. And I think it's completely free. I haven't paid any money just yet. Um, but here you go in and you can see it's missing the why, unclear novelty, and then it gives me uh, suggestions for improvement that go even deeper. So for a stronger opening, start like this. And I think that, I think that's better. I think that's actually better. This was actually from a real paper that's already been submitted. And I feel like, uh, I feel like if we had done this, it would have probably done much better. So thanks, Gemini. I, I, I think it's great. And like I said, it's got example, um, uh, sentence starters for me. It's got other things. It's got concise, you know, it gives me everything I need. And then this is the revised example. It's a little bit too long, maybe a bit wordy, but something that is much more powerful than what I had before. And all it took me was that single, simple prompt. Additional units, okay, be consistent. And then keywords, um, consider adding a few keywords after the abstract for indexing purposes. Well, yeah, that's what a lot of journals do anyway. So it does a fantastic job if you're using using it for uh, writing and editing. But I wanted to know, can it deal with figures? Because you can see down here, you can add a load of things. You can connect it to your drive, upload a file, record your audio. You can allow it to access your camera and you can give it some sample media if you're working with something um, and you just wanna give it some something that's already in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, we don't need that anyway, so just ignore that bit. So, next bit. One of the things I've always been really impressed with with ChatGPT is the ability to extract information from figures, from schematics, from tables, so great. So here I've uploaded one of my figures and it's got the figure caption as well. And I just wanted to know what the main conclusions are that I can take away for, from this figure for a peer-reviewed paper. And this is really great if you're actually writing a peer-reviewed paper because you can put in your figures and then you can sort of like flesh out the actual text from the figures. That means you're doing the data, but all of that really boring stuff like typing out all of the words and sort of like brainstorming ideas really is now done for you. You still need to act as the editor, but really it gets so, so easy if you just follow this uh, sort of like workflow of creating a paper based on the story that you can tell with the figures and then use the figures to create the text. It's what I've been doing and it's really great. So here, this figure presents the current density, blah, 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 and then key observations, annealing temperature. And the one thing I like down here is like, 
it really went into the detail, into the science. Okay, this implies that this electrode offers better charge extraction efficiency in this voltage range. So it's actually sort of like really understood the brief. And obviously I need to go through with a like fine toothed comb. Or do you just say tooth comb? I'm not sure, let me know in the comments. But ultimately this is uh, just a really great starting point. And it's gone really, really deep into the figure, far deeper than other tools that I've tried. And like I said, it's completely free then down here it's got further considerations for a peer-reviewed paper it gives me more detail than i asked for and i love that so the next thing i wanted to know is how does it work with pdf documents there's loads of tools out there now that actually extract information from pdf documents but now i want to know can this do it any better and i put in one of my peer-reviewed papers and i just asked what are the main conclusions from this paper and once again it gives me a really great summary the main conclusions are this of this paper are this complex vertical strategy cooling rates, impact structure and performance, role of annealing, interface alignment. So it goes in to enough detail, but not overwhelming. And also it gives me sort of like some things afterwards which are a little bit more detailed, but they aren't sort of like I said, just like the um, overwhelming details. It gives me everything that I kind of just need to know. There's five conclusions and this is exactly what this paper says. So overall, it's been able to deal with the format of the paper, it's been able to deal with the language in the paper, it's been able to see all of the paper. And I think uh, that is really all you can ask from something like this at the moment. So if it's a language, or a written text task that you need to do, this would be a great option for you. Check it out. If you like this video, check out this one where I talk about how ChatGPT's new upgrade will change how you write stuff and code. Check it out.